Hello Model Railroad friends. In this video we are going to weather the Accurail 2 bay covered hopper that we built for the Model Railroad News build and review. But there is a catch. There will be no chalks, no pigments, no pan pastels, and most of the weathering will be done with paintbrushes and the dreaded airbrush. The first step in the weathering process is to destroy the lettering on the car. So I'm using a homemade sanding stick from a thousand grit sandpaper and a wooden coffee stirrer. And I'm just going back and forth over the paint lettering just to wear it off and give it that faded look. Once the lettering has been totally obliterated, I like to pre-shade the car with a cooler version of the paint that came with the model. So I want to reduce the warmth in the paint and also start that fading process. So I'm using my Iwata Eclipse airbrush here and some thin down uh, Gollum Gray. And um, basically what I'm doing is toning the car down and then also giving it that random faded effect with um, a second post shading level here. So you can see I'm using a ghost gray uh, from Game Color adding a nice fade to the car, giving it a random faded appearance. Shading done and the car toned down, the next step is to add a pin wash. So I'll be using some artist oils here and you can see that I've smeared those oils out onto a piece of cardboard essentially to get the linseed oil to wick away from the paint so it'll actually dry sometime this century. And then I'm using just basic mineral spirits here and getting a nice thin wash that I'll just apply to the model. So I'm just starting with a liner brush here and very lightly adding the oil wash to seams, uh, cracks, some of the um, ladders and different type of raised uh, molded on features here on the model. The caps uh, for the top of the covered hopper is another area that you can add the pin wash to really bring out the definition in the molded details. And then if you check out the description um, of the video here, I'm going to put down all of the affiliate links uh, for the materials and tools that I used in this video. Um, so if you want to go ahead and pick up uh, some paint or a couple of brushes or an airbrush, um, you can go ahead and find them at the Amazon affiliate links that I've posted below. Um, and by doing so, you help support the channel. So take a look and see what you think. One area where the pin wash really excels is on the running boards on top of the car. And it really gives that added depth and detail to the molded on plastic parts. Um, and again, I'm using a bit bigger of a brush here, but you can really see how it highlights that, that depth of those parts and you can see the nice detail starting to pop on the model just with a pin wash. One other area I like to add the pin wash is pretty much to any edge um, or seam on a model railroad car. It really gives uh, the car uh, that that um, perspective of the you know the raised edges on on the on the sides of the car and on and it also draws attention to the edges of the model uh, really giving it that depth. Um, so that shadow and that depth really starts to pop just by adding a, a pin wash. And this is a simple technique that you can add to your model that will really just make, make it turn from, you know, a basic toy into a replica and give it that real realistic look. So after the initial pin wash has been added, I like to do a thing called chipping to the model. So 
what I'm doing here is is taking a version of the the color gray that's on the model and a sponge from a piece of packaging and I'm using full strength paint and I just dab it into the paint uh, the sponge into the paint and then wipe it off so it's almost like dry brushing um, very little paint on the model and then once all of my sponge chipping is done I go back with some rusty colors and a paintbrush and here I'm using uh, basically a dark rust almost looks like uh, steel um, to go back and, and add that bare metal finish and then the brush that I'm using here is it's a army painter psycho it is a very fine detail brush that allows me to go back over those sponge chips that I've added and really add that that exposed metal look to the model and again this is a, a fairly tedious process but it really makes the the chips pop um, and gives that added added visual um, effect to your model that that really makes it pop once we're done with the uh, metal chips I'll go back over it with a rust chip just to give it that orangey rust brownie rusty appearance here so I'm using Vallejo light rust to go back over those steel chips I'm also using it to add some uh, wear on the edges as well as the ladders and you can see I'm just randomly going over where I've chipped before and adding those rust chips and again you know some some of the the chips are heavier than others bigger than others uh, you want to keep it random don't want it uniform so you just want to go through and lightly touch the the tip of the brush with the paint on the edge of the model and and spread it out and have fun doing your chipping so to tone down those chips um, I go back over all of them with a orangey rusty wash and um, using a Vallejo acrylic wash here and just going through with my paintbrush and, and lightly glazing over the existing chips that I've painted and gives that uh, appearance that some rust is starting to weep away from the center of the pock marks and you know essentially stain the paint. Um, and again, I do this to the entire model. Once the, the washes have been applied, I go and, and do a heavier rust wash with some oil paints here. So I go and add full strength oil to the car, and then I'll come back over it with a wet uh, brush of just plain mineral spirits. And I'll drag straight down. Uh, to give that streaky look and I know it looks like I just plastered it onto the side of the car but I'll come back through with just a, a wet mineral spirits clean brush and start pulling away some of that excess paint and you get a nice fade rusty fade to the side of the car and it doesn't look too plastered on and oil paint takes a while to dry so you have a lot of working time with it so if you make a mistake you can always go back and pull away excess paint so here I'm using a darker color brown doing the same process over and over building up that rusty effect and really starting to get some uh, visual cues uh, additional visual cues added to the side of the car here I'll go in with a sponge as well and you can see when you start to add this rust of this rust wash the car really comes to life One of my favorite things to add to the car is lading spills. So this car is going to be, on my model railroad, it's going to be used in bentonite service. Um, so bentonite is a, a whitish gray type powder um, that is used uh, for the iron mining process. And it's typically spilled over the sides of covered hoppers and leaves like a kind of an off-white smear on the side of the car. So to simulate that, Again, using full strength oil and pulling it down the side. Here I'm pulling out some uh, Vallejo snow ground texture to simulate lading spills on top of the car. 
and it's just an acrylic paste that I've added and then I'll take my sponge and go back over it and you can see it leaves a nice uh, textured residue on top of the car. Next on my weathering to-do list here for this car is I'm going to add some graffiti and I've never done this before. So I've gone ahead and uh, essentially created a stencil out of masking tape and I'm using my airbrush to create a base layer for my, my, ma my main tag on the car, my main piece of graffiti. So it's just gonna be um, the word free and we'll build the layers up of yellow and then we'll come back in and do a split of of the lettering and add the the blue over the top so again just using vallejo colors in the airbrush with some uh, th airbrush thinner and building up over multiple passes that color so as you can see when i take the, the masking tape away i still have to come back with the, the hand brush and and add the uh the the, f the color to some faded spots however um, this process really, really wasn't, I guess, too effective. I ended up having to hand brush the, the tag on for most of the way anyway. So using the airbrush wasn't 100%. I come back through and, and line the graffiti with black and white paint. And again, this was almost a disaster, and it took me multiple tries to get this right. Uh, but again, using that Psycho you really get some nice fine, that Psycho uh, paintbrush, get some really fine detail work in on the lettering. So again, right now it looks, looks pretty gaudy, but um, over time it gets straightened out. So then we'll go ahead and do the trucks and wheel sets. We're gonna use some German black brown um, from Vallejo in the airbrush. And again, just giving a nice coating that uh, gives that rusty appearance of the car. And then finally, we'll just add some dust effects here. I'm using deck tan uh, in the airbrush and essentially just giving a random spray pattern and it really tones down that graffiti, gives the car a nice dusty and used look. And then we'll add the same effect here on the uh, trucks as well that dusty effect especially with the bentonite pouring out on the bottom some of that's going to get on the on the on the wheels and the and the trucks as well so the final result here is i think a pretty realistic looking car um, and again this is an accurail car so with some good weathering you can really make a inexpensive car pop Don't forget to click here to subscribe to my channel, or better yet, check out another video about the Mascouten Valley Model Railroad or one of my other DIY videos. Thanks for watching, and keep her in notch 8.